Welcome to the first episode of the Luxury Presence Mentorship Series. I'm in the beautiful Beverly Hills with the legendary Jade Mills, who has sold over $4 billion in real estate in her amazing career. My first question would be, how did you get into real estate? Was it something that you've always wanted to do, or was it a spur of the moment you just happened to fall into it? I got into real estate because my husband left me. And my daughter was three months old, and we both dropped out of college. So I had no occupation. So the only thing I could do, I felt like I really needed uh, something that I love to do and that I was happy doing. Yeah. So I sold my house, we sold our house, and my real estate broker said, you'd be a great agent. And I said, but I don't know anything about real estate. And he said, well, you will. I will take you under my wing. So Spike Dresser and I were out into the world so I could become a real estate agent. Do you think that having a mentor is key to having a successful yes. real estate yes. career? A mentor in the beginning is very practical yeah. and almost necessary in today's real estate world. When you're new in the real estate business, you have no way of getting clients. You can say to your friends, I sell real estate, but they don't even want to hear that. They want to go with the bigger and the better broker who's had lots of experience and who can help to sell their home. I agree, 100%. And for those who don't know how to pick a mentor, would you suggest them finding someone within their firm or does it really matter where they find it as long as they find one? I think if you know someone who's been successful selling real estate, the best thing you can do is ask them if they would be willing to help you. So you'll go to someone and say, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I'm very interested in selling real estate, but I understand that I need someone to help me get started. I understand in the first year or so, the money doesn't roll in and you kind of have to... The first year is the most difficult. Yeah. I think that the first year when you're selling real estate, it's all about your contacts yeah. and how you get those people that trust you, that want to work with you. So in the very beginning, I reached out to my children's friends' parents and they had to go to school. They had to pick up their children after school. So I would stand out there and meet as many parents as I could thinking, you know, that th these are going to be my clients. Well, they became really good friends and my clients. So it was really good. It was a very good way for me to meet people and to work with people and to sell them their dream homes. Yeah. So you have to find your niche. Maybe it's a charity. Maybe it's if you sing, other people that you sing in a choir with. Um, whatever it is where you spend a lot of time, that's where you should sort of start to work on your, your client base, your database. Um, I think that in the beginning, you don't have the confidence. And that's why it's very important that you try to team up with someone that can help you. Team up with somebody that you admire. Team up with someone who's had great experience. And the most important thing is who is honest. Integrity in this business is everything. So you always want to do the right thing. Uh, I always tell a story about my daughter. Her first sale, she was wanted to do everything herself. So she was at the inspections and the inspector was there and he was telling her about the end of the inspections and I walked in and I walked over and saw that in the condominium the this living room was right over the garage and I could see that the garage was sloping and the floor of the condo was sloping too so we told the buyer we said you know this is going to be an issue when you sell and of course, Tiffany, my daughter, was very, very upset with me at the time. It killed her deal. He backed out, but then we went on to the next. So the next was a bigger and better property, and that man referred us probably 10 clients. So it, it's very good to always do the right thing and, and always know that you're advising your clients in the right way. What do you think separates you personally, your brand, your image, your clients, what do you think separates you from other real estate agents in LA who are top tier? I've grown up very humbly. 
my father was a dairy farmer. Um, we, we never knew we didn't have any money growing up, but we didn't. And my parents were always, always told us that we could do anything we wanted to do. Um, coming from a very humble beginning, I think is a blessing. Um, I think my children are not quite as lucky because they have had a lot. And so I think it's harder. You're not as hungry. You don't need it as badly. And sometimes that's not a good thing. I was alone with my three month old daughter. And I said to my mother one day, I said, oh my gosh, I have no money. And my husband left and I'm in a terrible place. And she said, you can come home, but you must pay rent. You, I'm not a babysitter. You need to be home at midnight, just like when you left here. And it's our rules. And I thought, hmm, okay, that, <laughs> that doesn't sound so good. So I got a job as a cocktail waitress at the Century Plaza Hotel and got my real estate license. Worked In those days, it used to take a full year to get your real estate license. So I worked yeah. at the Century Plaza, had an amazing experience there, met fabulous people there, and then went on to start selling real estate. But I couldn't quit that job until I sold my first two homes. And after that, I thought, oh my gosh, this is, I'm home free. But it's always a challenge. I would say for the first three or four years, it's a challenge. And then people start referring you and it becomes very different. So hang in there. What do you think is the most challenging part of being an agent right now? The most challenging part of being an agent today is obtaining the clients yeah. and the clients that you want yeah. and the clients that you can work with and that you feel good about. Yeah. Um, I would used to take every single listing, work with every single buyer. At this point in my life, I have four children and seven grandchildren. And I, if, if I don't feel comfortable with someone, it's a marriage. It's a marriage for three months or six months or however long you're looking or however long you have that listing. So you have to be really ready to be with that person right. and talk to them every day for the duration of that right. relationship. Yeah. So I would say at this point, I'm very willing to say, I don't think we're going to work well together. And normally what's happened lately is that the client will say, well, why? No, no, no. I, I, I want to see if we can make this work. Yeah. But still, you know, if someone is not going, if you're not going to work well with someone, you usually know up yeah. front. So in the beginning, I took every single person. Yeah. But at this point, I'm, I'm more careful. Yeah. So at the beginning, would you advise agents to take everything that they can get? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> take work every, with it. Take everything you can. Yeah. Every single listing every single buyer yeah. is gold yeah. in the beginning because you want as many deals as you can possibly possible, have just to keep your head beginning. above i think that you must return calls within an hour and that is the outside time i try to return all calls within 20 minutes but that is the key to success making people feel like they're special how do you think coldwell is in developing new new talent and new agents. I think that um, you certainly don't base where you go based on commission. You yeah. go in the beginning on where you're going to be trained. Yeah. It's very difficult. I mean, 6% of something uh, is, is wonderful, but if you have nothing, you get 6% of zero. <laughs> so it's much better yeah. to be trained, go with a company that can train you or partner with someone, if you have a client yeah. and you feel that you're not ready for that client, partner with a with somebody that's been in the business for a long time and who has a great reputation. I have many people call me and say, I have a big listing appointment. Will you come with me? Yeah. Of course I will. What would be your final words of wisdom for new agents coming in and people who are trying to get situated and figure things out in this business, cutthroat business. Knowledge is king. Yeah. Um, when I first got into the business, I sat at the desk and we had this book. Now you can go on the computer. We had this book 
And I went through this book and looked at all the listings, yeah. all the solds, and I went by streets and the streets that I wanted to work. Mm -hmm. And I knew the buyers and the sellers for the last three years. Yeah. Knowledge is king. Yeah. If you know what you're doing and you can go on a listing appointment or you can say to a, one of your buyers, that house sold for this amount, that house sold for this, this person lives there. There's nothing more important in this business except being very ethical than knowledge. Yeah. I do have a follow-up for that. So for people coming in, do you think it's more important to cold call, door knock, or do you think they should chase off for the warm contacts that they have already? Which one do you think outweighs? Number one, use your own contacts and your own database. Tell everyone you're selling real estate. When you are in line at the grocery store, <laughs> you tell the person in line, Oh, I'm going to show a house. I'm doing, you never ever know where you're going to find your next listing yeah. or your next buyer. Yeah. So let everybody know. So many people say, Oh no, I said, did you tell them that you sell real estate? Well, no. Why? Yeah. I mean, that is the only way they're going to know is if you tell them. Right. The other thing is sit open houses on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to meet people. And I have seen people sit there and stay on their phone or not even stand up to greet someone. How will that ever work to get a client? Yeah. I remember sitting in an open house on Stone Canyon many years ago and this cute couple walked in with flip flops and shorts and, and I, you know, I didn't know where they lived or anything about them. And I welcomed them and we had a great conversation. Seven years later, they called me. Unfortunately, they were getting a divorce. Oh. But seven <laughs> years later, they called me yeah. and said, we remembered how kind you were to us. You didn't know us. You didn't know what we did. You didn't know anything about us. And I listed a $22 million house. I think that's, that's all I have for you okay. for right now. Great. <laughs> Thank Great. you so much for your Call time. Call me anytime. You I'm happy to help. Me as, as long as you pick up the I'll pick it up or call you back within 20 minutes. Because that's the rule of thumb. <laughs>